The tax collector was recently released on demand because nobody wants Corona and to pay $9 for popcorn. It's either one or the other. It stars Bobby Soto and Shia LaBeouf. The rest of the cast is pretty interesting too, but we'll get there. So I'll be honest, when I heard that Shia LaBeouf was playing this Mexican gangster, I was worried, but that was the problem. That's what I heard going into this. That's not the case at all. The people that think that Shia is playing a Mexican dude didn't watch the movie. In fact, if you wanted to find something wrong with the movie, just watch the movie. Now don't get me wrong, this movie isn't horrible, it's not. But there are too many moments where I'm just yanking my follicles out. Like I'm starting a lawnmower. That's why I've only watched this movie like twice, because I need to hold on to this beautiful... Well, hair. Yeah, sorry. There's not a lot of barbers that are offering a mid-fade without a side of dry cough. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Easy access hair loss treatment. Did you guys know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Because I didn't. Where the f**k's that step in? Now, usually you gotta go into a doctor's office and you're gonna be like, hey doc, you know, I'm starting to lose the goods. But with Keeps, you can talk to a doc online and get the hair loss medication delivered. Easy clap. Typically, it takes like four to six months to see some results. So while you still have some hair, get to it. Peep Why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And if you're ready to prevent hair loss on that buttery scalp of yours, go to keeps.com slash Mr. Gigi or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com slash Mr. Gigi. And thank you Keeps for sponsoring this video. So with Shia alongside a pretty much all Latino cast, there was a controversy with this movie. Controversy. I don't want to feed into this bullshit too much. We will talk about the actual movie ASAP. And I do the air quotes because I am reluctantly referring to this as a controversy. Because chances are you'll see one tweet with like 200 likes accusing Shia of brownface, trying to cancel some shit. And headlines will take that and run. They'll say some crazy shit like, the internet is upset about Shia's brown face, which irks me to no end. It's why you see such irritating headlines all the time. People are starting to think Titanic is racist. And the entire article will source like three random tweets from these greedy possums on the web. So I wanna make this very clear. I did not see anybody upset about Shia's role in this movie. I read articles from these random writers stating that people were upset about the alleged brown face. So number one, one, Shia isn't Mexican in the movie. It's never said, it's never shown. According to the director, David Ayer, he's just a white dude who grew up here, who by proxy grew up in this LA culture. He uses slang, he's adopted somewhat of an accent, and he just happens to be a gangster. I kid you not, one of these dog shit articles cited an Instagram page called Foo's Gone Wild, saying some shit like, but this page didn't seem to have a problem with it, and they did indeed say that Shia is a foo. You guys are getting paid to do that? It's funny, if you go to the trailer on YouTube, all the top comments are fighting back and saying, hold on, we the Latinos are not upset about shit. Other people are mad for us. We're gonna watch the movie. You take from that what you will. Shia earned my respect on this one. I understand how some people can laugh off his performance because he keeps seeing the nervous, ticky bumblebee boy, but I gotta get props for props or due. He was my favorite part of the movie by far. I don't know if that speaks more negatively of the movie or more positively of Shia. He dove into the role. I believe he's this loose cannon that's oddly self-preserving. He's smooth, charismatic. I wanted more Creeper. His name's Creeper. It's funny because he kind of plays Shia along with Creeper because there's banter between the main characters where you think he's not even acting right now. Are these bloopers? So this movie's not great. Uh, there are parallels to be drawn with Training Day, AKA there's two men in a car. David Ayer wrote both, but rest assured, Training Day is superior on pretty much every level. It sucks because I don't even think I can call this movie good. I want to like it. It's fun. I'll give it that. You see what really hurt me is our main character, which is not Shia. The trailer makes it seem otherwise poopy ass trailer. But the main character, to me, was a letdown. He sounds like somebody trying to sound intimidating and I cannot ignore it. Listen to me. My homie Creeper over there, he's gonna start by curb stomping your high nas and then he's gonna give me a kiss on the lips. And you don't wanna know what's gonna happen next. 
follow me on Twitter. So the story is that David Ayer, the director, went to the same gym as Bobby, and then they became friends. And once David heard that Bobby's an actor, he was like, I'm David Ayer, I've made things. I want you in the next thing. And having seen some interviews, Bobby seems like a genuinely nice dude to where I feel bad criticizing him and throwing out my regular jokes. You can tell he cared about this story being told. I mean, even off camera, him and Shia have developed a strong relationship and they are both actively working to bring the arts to the youth in LA that don't really have it. Moral of the story, I'm an asshole and I'm not that proud of it. The plot is David and Creeper collect money from gangs and those alike to give their cut to Wizard, the head honcho in prison. But then another boss comes into the mix and tries to take away Wizard's business, the antagonist. His name's Conejo, which means rabbit, and he's trying to do a big, so like, I flash back to Lowriders where I'm not gonna lie about my criticisms of the movie. I wanna like it. I want it to be good. It's heartwarming to see an all-Latino cast in Shia LaBeouf. We could use a big name for marketing, no shame. And he did the role justice. I'm excited for the day where we can see a blockbuster caliber movie, Latino cast, that I can report back is great. I rented it to watch it and apparently some people haven't even heard of it, so here's my contribution. Now I'm gonna run through this movie, and to start off, I'm gonna sound really nitpicky, but my small issues at the start continue to pop up throughout the movie and also end up with worse results. The movie begins very sloppy in my opinion. We start with the wife having a bad dream foreshadow, you get introduced to David's family, and then he arrives at his business? But he's a gangster, he ain't got no nine to five, and I'm sure he needs a cover up, but he complains to his cousin, who also works there, that they should have opened up an hour ago, because she apparently just throws ragers in this abandoned jewelry store chop shop haunted house. Oh hey, are you guys here for the super intimidating exposition dump business meeting? Did you bring what you were asked to bring? So you're supposed to open up an hour ago. Did you bring what you were asked to bring? Supposed to open up an hour ago. Supposed to open up an hour ago. Creeper makes his entrance and they decide to get their trailer moments out of the way. He has this quick interaction where this guy's terrified of him and says, I hear you're the devil. And it bugs me that that late epic moment it just isn't earned right now like at all in addition david's talking to this guy and then you hear the clear switch in voice because he goes narration mode but he's still talking to this guy it's just very amateur like don't ever come here again i'll come to you Every gang in LA has to pay the fucking taxes. David's uncle is actually the dad from George Lopez, which is kind of funny. I'm a little upset they couldn't finagle Ernie into this, but we'll take it. They have a neat little sign language scene because the feds are always listening. Even though he already talked about it for a minute. You know Kilo, they're from Big Lomas came through this morning? Not his soul. He's good, they called. That little dude is used to dealing with little fucking homies and now he's talking to the fucking power. Do I was fucking- <laughs> Yeah, that's probably the closest that guy's been to Cauliflower. Says the guy who just ate half a Little Caesars pizza, reheated. Yeah, I hate most things about me. In these driving scenes, I can't help but ask, is Shia even acting? You ever meditate? Shia, that's not in the script. So first thing in the morning? Yeah. Clear my head of noise. Boom. Shia, the line is, let's get this money. Are we killing anybody today? I got fucking nice shoes on. For fuck's sake. Hold on. He's got this. Shia? I Cut. They're making their rounds picking up money and they have to pull off for a side mission. Certain sound effects are funny to me, like I get it, but for example, in this scene, you hear a slight car squeal when he just merged into the next lane. So they show up to a house where the guy that's tied up, I guess, smashed one of the homies' ladies, like consensually. David cuts it off because they're fucking up business with the bloods and tells the guy to boot pop the homie who did this. Hey, Pete! Boop bop this motherfucker. I'm sure he said something else, but I refuse to be corrected on that. That gangster told him to boop bop the guy. And boop bop that guy he does. Bop it! Oh! What? Oh. David hand delivers him back to the Bloods. They respect each other and hell yeah, racism down 100% today, baby. By the way, this is a fun little cameo by Bone from Training Day. I respect it. But if you're gonna have cameos from Training Day, it's almost blasphemous not to have a cameo from- Oh shit, yo! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Yo, Mr. Gigi. I heard you got a little problem, homeboy. Up there on YouTube thinking you got the right to judge movies and whatnot. Trying to act like Siskel and Ebert, man. Trying to act like your opinion matters. Let me tell you something, dog. You try to judge one of my movies and I find out you say something disrespectful, I'm gonna show up at your doorstep. That's how it's gonna go, homeboy. So make a decision. You feel me? Cause Hector, I come fast and furious, dog. I don't waste no damn time. You say one thing disrespectful about my movie, 
you're going to have your shit pushed in. Trust. <laughs> Maybe I just need to watch the movie a few more times to get a accurate reading. Yeah, uh, eight, 8 out of 10. <laughs> What's a Latino cast without no Google Yammy? The man, the myth. The Hector. He's only in it for a few minutes, but he still gets more screen time than Shia's tattoos. The tattoos he got because of this role. Now, I don't think it was for this role, because we kinda not really, like at all, see it for a split second. He's got Creeper tattooed under his ribs. Insane marketing tactic, or just Shia things? I'm gonna go with the latter. David is so sensual when he threatens people. Like, he's gonna blow this guy's brains out, but he's moving like it's an LL Cool J video. Like, come on, no one else picked up on this? Give him a little lick, David. I'm over here. Stroke of my dick, I got lotion on my dick. So they're short on money, so they gotta go pay somebody a visit. Somebody didn't pay. And who edited this movie? Another training day cameo? Jake! Jake! You got Adobe Premiere? It's so goofy. Like, there's deleted scenes in this. I'm asking you, homie, why would you do that? <laughs> Open your mouth! Shia's accent just vanishes for a scene. You can't compartmentalize. You're taxing 43 different street gangs. That's thousands of dudes in the most violent, fucked up subculture in Los Angeles. And you are, you want to play a fucking pope out here. Know like, I really want to like this movie, but fuck. They go to pick up some more cash and we meet Conejo, the rival boss trying to take their business, who's actually a fairly popular local Los Angeles rapper named Conejo. Thought that was pretty dope. What's not dope are really cute sound effects in serious moments. That ain't the problem. Put the fucking Fetty on the table right now. It's your last supper, I promise you, my boy. Right now. Fucking excited, homie. It's just a lot of fucking cash, you feel me? You know my uncle whack Venom's dad. Bruh. George is pretty familiar with Conejo, and David's sitting there like, oh, you're scared, huh? I know, huh? So David's in bed with his wife, and this scene's kinda dumb. It's kinda fucking stupid. We're not gonna talk about it. There's a random martial arts training scene, which we'll talk about it later, don't you worry. And here we are at the quinceanera, and the best moments are with Creeper. The funny moments are with Creeper. He has a nice little serious conversation with David. Then it's all ruined because the girl from the deal earlier just waltz into the yard. You would think the local mini boss would have some extra security on hand. Anyway, she tells him to go have a sit down with Conejo because his uncle had just gone over there and yeah they got george in a fucking yeti cooler hashtag not sponsored you knew who i was and what my family was oh well, now your ass got security why why <laughs> ah! even this convo is just downright goofy that's the best word i can use i'm sorry i'm scared the kids alexis these are international players worth Billions. I swear we're just missing lines in these scenes. It's just he blows up out of nowhere, but it's not really responding to what she just said. He's just it's just, it's just raising his voice and saying shit. It's, 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 fucking, the fuck is, it's I'm, I'm fucking frying right now. The dialogue's just so awkward. I can't ignore that. Damn, baby, don't cry. No. No, no. Oh, oh. All right, chill. She got that wop, that wet ass pupil. Subscribe. David gathers with Creeper and these random shooters that we don't know anything about. And you remember how I brought up the lack of security when it's obvious that people want to murder him? I'm pretty sure this guy's the head of security. <laughs> Fucking dozy locks in a Hyundai Sonata. So they get moved in on. They set off a pipe bomb. Conejo's here too, which I, that doesn't make sense. But I guess I'd take a stroll here too if their security was about as effective as a Yorkie with one of those cone caps. David gets away and goes to meet up with his wife and kids. Out the core, fool. Creeper gets captured and Conejo later FaceTimes David to show his execution, which Conejo's like in some empty property. David's on the road. You gotta assume the signal's kind of ass. He's like buffering and shit. It's like David's crying and yelling then. Fuck you, you motherfucker. The they call him the Googly Emmy God. David takes his family to a hotel and then leaves to pick up his savings. His wife tells him the end is coming to pick up the kids and David and his wife plan for their getaway. So he arrives at the hotel and who would have thought a guy named Conejo was quicker than him? I hate this part of the movie. Like a lot. Like more than uh, anything I've seen so far. She's dead. I don't know her name, but she's dead. And honestly, I feel bad. I mean, it sucks. Look at her. Poor thing was wearing white pants. Am I right, ladies? I mean, can we talk? But seriously, he cleans her up. Starts clutching her body in a pool of blood, yelling at the sky like it's a music video. And during this entire scene, I was sat there yelling at the screen, where are your kids? She's dead. Yes, very unfortunate. Little guy, little girl, thoughts? Hold on, let me metaphorically cleanse you with physical cleansing. Your babies? Scoot over, babe. 
Let me just shimmy in behind you. No. Actually, I should call her sister to see if the kids are okay. But now we're all wet. Let me change you real quick. Here you go. Let me just tuck you in. Now you're prepped for heaven in this hotel bed. Hey, it's got three stars. Los niños, estupido. Where were your kids? Your kids. Open your mouth. So he finally calls her sister and oh weird plot twist, she doesn't have the kids, what? Maybe I shouldn't have taken that brisk walk to ominously loiter at this overpass before calling you. And weird, Cornell calls right after, it's like he knows. And what's up dickwad? David can't save his kids alone because everyone's dead I guess. So he goes to the only man who can lend a hand in these tough times. No not him, Bone. You know for a house party in the heart of LA, you'd think you'd have a better DJ? A man's playing the I just seen Android unboxing right now. So he tells Bone what happened, and he obviously needs some killers on hand. Dumper, we fucking with blood. That's right. This is a good motherfucker here, man. That's right. I told you, use the candle. We fucking with you. That's right. So they head out to the location he was given, and we get this shootout scene, which is, is it cool? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. They capture one of them, and they start to ask for the location of the kids. He doesn't talk, so he grinds his face on the pavement. Ouch. <laughs> Knock this shit. I mean, you could have used the face ID if you didn't. Okay, yeah, that works too. He finds his kids at Conejo's grandmother's house. They're just vibing, watching the Lorax and shit. And Abuelita69 tells them where Conejo is. Unprompted, by the way. And hey, look, Conejo believes in one man security too. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm hacking the mainframe. This is what those Bitcoin investors do after you pay $400 for their course. Bone gets captured, but isn't instantly blown away for some reason. So he ends up winning this fight. David wins his and it's game time, baby. I love how this hideout had like six dudes locked and loaded, but Conejo's actual hideout has three people and open curtains. talk about this dog game too it's hard not to hit these two with a blind spray what's the bloom set to he actually catches a slug but it's a good thing that this girl didn't feel like capitalizing because she shoots off like three shells in like four seconds and now she pauses like damn this fucking rabbit really left me this becomes one of those fights where bullets don't really matter because david got shot in the shoulder conejo got shot in his forearm the same one he's fucking wailing with right now i love it so conejo's on top whooping that ass and getting his shit off and you know why we had the flashback in this moment because nobody remembered this one-off garbo you probably didn't even remember that i brought it up in the review i think his wife's flashback would have sufficed or even another creeper flashback this didn't have any significance but see you conejo you just got bodied by a white belt the reveal at the end is that wizard, the head honcho in the pen, is actually his father. And minutes after killing Conejo, he knows that already, which is stupid. But it's because as he says, he's, he's got the devil on his shoulder, giving him the T. How do you know? I got the devil on my shoulder here whispering in my ear. Which like, that's really dope to say and shit, but we haven't gone there at all. So you can't do that. And there's no way that an actual person just told you because, Lou? It just happened! Thank you. Don't you have somewhere to be? So Wizard's finally proud of his son because he took the devil on one-on-one -on -one and also saved Wizard's business too. But David realizes he doesn't want that power. He wanted his family and now he'll never have that back. So he hangs up on his dad and then looks at us, judging us. Like he didn't just cosplay I Am Legend, just with a different type of mannequin. And that's Tax Collector. And I don't think I really need to wrap it up in any kind of way. I explained everything I wanted to explain. So just, you know, rest in peace, Creeper. Oh. If you guys enjoyed this movie review, please leave a like. And here is your second reminder. Please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my lovely, 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 lovely patrons for supporting the boy. And shout out to Benny for retweeting my last video tweet. I have a new Mr. GG live channel where you can see a lot of edits from my Twitch if you just don't want to tune into the stream. Maybe you'll enjoy it edited. I play all kinds of games. I'm starting to play a shit ton of Among Us. I reacted to the Predator Chronicles and I still have to finish that up. Just do all kinds of random shit. And if we hit 10K subs on that channel, we'll do something frosty, trust me. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out.